Low water is revealing things along Yellowknife Bay that we don't normally see. A lot of mud, a bit of garbage, and some houseboats resting in the muck. But is the low water also exposing risk we can't see, like arsenic along the shoreline? The CBC's Lini Lambrink has been looking into this, and she joins us now with more. So Lini, remind us why there's arsenic in Yellowknife Bay. So mining waste was dumped into Great Slave Lake decades ago, back when giant and con mines were operating. There was also Giant Mine's infamous roaster, which spewed arsenic trioxide into the air for a few years. Those are some of the key ways contaminants, including arsenic, made it into the lake sediment. There are also ways it's still happening. Now, Baker Creek runs through the Giant Mine remediation site and it is still carrying arsenic into the bay. Okay, so the water levels are dropping in the lake. We know there's contaminants. Is this something people should be worried about? So according to one researcher that I spoke to, no. Mike Palmer is a scientist with the Aurora Research Institute, and he has studied arsenic in the sediment around Great Slave Lake. We met at Rotary Park in Yellowknife, one of the places where the low water is really obvious, and he says it's fine to walk through all the mud that's been exposed there. The sampling that we've done in shallow water areas that people would interact with through wading or swimming tends to be quite a bit lower, the levels of arsenic, than, than in the deep water areas. And those levels are actually close to, to federal national guidelines. Palmer says arsenic has settled into deep water areas of the bay over time. That's where you'll find it in higher concentrations, and it's not coming up to the surface of the water. But Palmer has also found the closer you get to giant mine, the higher the arsenic levels become. Of course, because that's the source of the pollution. Speaking of giant mine, does this have any effect on the remediation project? So keeping things wet is how some contaminated areas at the mine are actually managed. So if water levels continue to drop or certain places dry out, the project team may have to switch gears. One of those spots is a pile of tailings that were dumped into the bay decades ago. You can see it in satellite imagery from 2023. More of those tailings are exposed now because of dropping water levels. Because they are very low risk material. They're not like the arsenic trioxide, for instance. They're, they're a byproduct of mining that is quite benign, to be honest. So the risk, like any of our risks around the site, are as if, if they become airborne and there's uh, dust associated with them. So we are currently monitoring that area to make sure it stays saturated, because it is currently saturated, although the water level's below it, it's still saturated, uh, to monitor and make sure it doesn't become airborne. We do that with all of our tailings ponds as well. I mentioned Baker Creek earlier. It flows through the remediation site into Yellowknife Bay. The mouth of the river used to be underwater. Now the contaminated area is more of a marsh. Plato says they're keeping an eye on this area too. If either were to dry out and become dusty, she says the remediation project would use water or product to keep the dust down. And that's important because inhaling that contaminated dust particles, those contaminated dust particles would be unhealthy. Okay, thanks for looking into this, Lini. No problem.